Okay, hi everyone. My name is Madhu and um, this is a Brainstem production. Today we're going to be going over an introduction to seizure. So what is epilepsy? Um, November is actually National Epilepsy Awareness Month and that's why we're making this video. But epilepsy is a central nervous system disorder um, in which brain activity will become abnormal and this can cause seizures or periods of unusual behavior, sensation, and sometimes even loss of awareness. So epilepsy is actually more common than you would think it is. It is the fourth most common neurological disorder, and it affects people of all ages, all um, sexes, and all ethnicities. Epilepsy can often cause other health problems. It's also important to remember that it is a spectrum condition with a wide range of seizure types and control that varies from person to person. And public misunderstandings of epilepsy can actually cause challenges that are often comparable or even worse than seizures themselves. And that's why it's really important to raise awareness about epilepsy and about seizures. So what are the different types of seizures? There are three major groups of seizures that we're going to be talking about today. The first group is generalized onset seizures. Um, these seizures actually will affect both sides of the brain or groups of cells on both sides of the brain at the same time. Um, the next group we're going to be talking about are focal onset seizures. Um, so these seizures can actually start in one region of the brain and um, then spread to the rest. And um, it's generally used to talk about where the seizures begin. So unknown onset seizures are usually what happen when the beginning of the seizure is not known. And this could be unknown onset if it really isn't witnessed or seen by anyone. Um, this can happen when seizures happen during nighttime, for example, or if they happen in a person who lives alone. Um, and as we learn more information about what types of seizures this person is having, they can later be diagnosed as maybe generalized onset seizures or focal onset seizures. So these different groups of seizures can also have um, different symptoms on people. And that is what we're going to be talking about next. Um, that is which symptoms are uh, caused by a seizure. So as you can see from this list, there are various symptoms that can be caused by someone having a seizure. And um, this is not an exhaustive list. So that means that there are also many more symptoms that might not be listed here. Um, the ones that we see here are jerking movements of the arms and legs, stiffening of the body, loss of consciousness, um, breathing problems, falling suddenly. This can happen with loss of consciousness, um, not responding to noise or words for brief periods from someone else. Um, the person with a seizure can appear as though they're confused or in a haze, um, periods of rapid eye blinking and staring. Um, yeah. Okay, so what exactly causes a seizure and what does it exactly do to the brain? So seizures can be caused by a variety of things. Um, these can include an imbalance in neurotransmitters or hormones in the brain. It can be caused by a stroke. It can also be caused by a brain tumor. Um, check out our video on brain tumors if you haven't done that yet. Um, it can also be caused by brain damage from an injury or from um, illness. And um, to explain what exactly happens in the brain during a seizure, we should understand that our brains are always generating these electrical pulses. And these control everything from our movement um, they control our thoughts and they also control our memory. Um, these electrical pulses are transmitted by neurons, which you might have heard of. Um, neurons are a network of cells that are found in the brain and throughout the rest of the body. And if you measure the electrical activity of all of the brain's neurons, you would usually see um, many of these neurons firing independently with no obvious rhythm to how they're firing. However, during an epileptic seizure, this firing pattern changes and it becomes very different. And you can see it in um, the picture that I've included on this slide. 
So many neurons will actually generate electrical pulses at the same time, which is what you experience as a seizure. And your brain's normal electrical activity gets disrupted. Um, nearby groups of neurons will be activated in a pattern that's very coordinated. And this can result in like an increase of activity that might be located in just one area of the brain, for example. And mainly what this does and why it's so dangerous is because it scrambles the messages that the brain sends out to the rest of the body. And this is why they're often accompanied by uncontrollable movements and changes in emotions or behavior. So next we're gonna talk about how we usually diagnose seizures. Um, your healthcare provider is usually the person to do this. They will often ask about your symptoms and your health history if you go to them um, and provide the complaint that you think you might have a seizure. Um, you might be asked about other factors that like may have caused your seizure, such as drug or alcohol use, um, a recent injury to the head, um, high fever or infection can also cause seizures, or some genetic abnormality that um, you may already know you have or that you might have to be tested for. And um, after this, to carry out like the full diagnostic procedures, the healthcare provider may conduct neurological exams. Um, they might conduct blood tests to look for uh, problems in your blood sugar. They also conduct MRIs or CT scans and other imaging tests of the brain. Um, they could also test your brain's electrical activity using an electroencephalogram. Um, and they might also do a lumbar puncture, which measures the pressure in the brain and the spinal cord, um, the spinal canal actually, and it tests the cerebral spinal fluid for infection or other problems like that. Okay, so now that we've diagnosed seizures, how exactly will we treat them? Um, this is also usually something that your healthcare provider helps you with. Um, your healthcare provider will first identify what type of seizures you're having. And then based off of that, they usually prescribe a medication. Um, these medications are selected on the basis of the seizure, ba on, based on your age, um, the side effects that these medications may cause, um, their cost, and also how easy they are to use. So if you are in the hospital with seizures, then medicine can be given to you maybe by injection or intravenously. So other treatments for seizures include a vagus nerve stimulation. Um, and this is something where, um, this is a type of treatment where small pulses of energy are sent to the brain from one of the vagus nerves. And this is a pair of large nerves in the neck. And if you have, um, the partial seizures that aren't being controlled really well with medicine, then this may be a really good option for you. So it's done by surgically placing a battery to the chest wall. It's a very small battery and small wires will be attached to this battery and placed under the skin and around the nerve. And the battery is programmed to send energy impulses every few minutes to the brain. And what this does is that when you feel a seizure coming on, you can activate the impulses by holding a small magnet over the battery. And in most cases, this will actually help to stop the seizure. Um, however, this can have side effects like a hoarse voice, um, a pain in the throat, or even a change in the voice. Another treatment includes surgery. Um, surgery can be done to remove the part of the brain where all of these seizures are occurring or it can also help to stop the spread of the electrical currents through the brain that we don't want that result in seizures. So this could be an option for you if your seizures are hard to control and they always start in one part of the brain that isn't really involved in anything really important like speech or memory or vision. And unfortunately, surgery for epilepsy is um, really complex and it's often done by a specialized team um, you actually can be awake during the surgery because the brain doesn't feel um, any pain on its own. But if you're awake and usually able to follow what the surgeons tell you, then they're better able to check different areas of your brain during the procedure. And this is definitely not an option for everyone with seizures, 
but it is for those who suffer greatly from them in their day-to-day -day lives. So um, thank you so much for watching this video on types of seizures. And if you liked it, please subscribe to our channel and um, check out the rest of our videos.